All right guys, what's up? It's actually a really nice day today, about 38 degrees. As you can see, I don't have a coat on. Today I'm actually gonna be doing a whole bunch of wiring on the Tercel, and uh, hopefully, if all goes well, we'll be able to take a rip up and down the street and actually get a top speed on this thing. If you're just tuning in, my controller actually isn't that strong. It's only 36 volts and 400 amps. That in conjunction with the small motor size uh, means I'm kind of just hoping this thing goes fast enough to be driven on the street. I have no idea what the top speed is gonna be. I know I can take off in third and fourth gear, which is a good sign, but uh, I'll be happy if it hits 30, if I can just cruise it around. And then later we can always upgrade to more volts, more amps, advance the brushes on the motor. There's a, there's a bunch of little tricks we can do to make it go faster. For now, this is the controller I have. It was used, it was cheap, and I'm hoping it's strong enough to put this car on the street. So real quick, I'll give a rundown of what this thing needs to be legal right now. Uh, I took care of one thing off camera. I put on these hood pins. Uh, you need a hood latch for it to be legal, and I didn't have one at all. So that just leaves us with headlights, blinkers, tail lights, license plate lights, uh, some type of speedometer, which I have here. This is a stock Tercel one that I put into the top half of the Volvo dashboard. So we gotta mount this dashboard in here. And then I got two volt gauges just set in there. Uh, the one on the left is for the main battery pack and this one's gonna be for the 12 volt. And I think that's it as far as the major legality things are concerned. Uh, as long as I have all my lights and my blinkers, I should be good. There's actually a lot of weird loopholes in Wisconsin regarding cars that don't have roofs. And it'll actually allows me to get away with a couple extra things. So normally on a car, you can actually get a ticket for not having functioning door handles. As you can see, mine, mine don't do anything. My door is welded shut. But if you're operating uh, either a car that doesn't have a roof or a convertible with a top down, your door handles do not have to function. Your doors do not have to open. Another thing is a defogger or a defroster. Uh, in Wisconsin, you're legally required to have some type of system that will defog the windshield because obviously you need to see unless your car doesn't have a roof. If your car's a convertible at the top down or your car doesn't have a roof, you don't need a defogger. So there's a couple little loopholes that actually makes things a little bit easier for me with this car having no roof. Like I would have to go out and get an electric defogger, but now I don't. Okay, I already did a little bit of wiring on the headlights, so let me just take you up there and show you what I've done so far. As I mentioned in the last video, these are the $25 eBay projectors. I think they're four by six inches. They fit any car with a rectangular four by six inch bulb. They're really nice because they actually come with bulbs and plugs, like pre-wired pigtails on here, which is great if you want it to be like a stock car, just unplugs and plugs in, very nice. As you can see, I already got mine wired up and this sheathed wire goes all the way over to the other one. I just brought them over here because I figured it'd be easier to bring all the wires into the car on the driver's side. Guys, I just remembered one more thing about the legality. Uh, windshield wipers are necessary. I have wiper arms and I have the wiper motor and everything ready to be hooked up. It's just not here right now. I suspect that for a little while I can just bolt the wipers up and get away with it. Don't plan on ever driving this in the rain anyway. All right, I'll give you two seconds to figure out the obvious mistake I made when I wired up these headlights. There's a blinker on that side and I should probably have those wires bundled with the headlight wires. So now I have to take this wiring loom off. It's just zip tied in a couple spots. Not too big of a deal, just a little annoying. All right, so I just popped the blinker out. It's one screw on these cars. And when I took the wiring harness out of the car, I left the factory pigtails on everything. So you can see I've extended these wires, got them soldered and shrink tubed. Should be good for a little while. Uh, if you guys didn't know, I did save like all my wiring harness stuff from this car and the Volvo. So I just have this nice bundle of totally usable wire. And that's probably what I'll be using to wire up all of this. To me, it's actually easier just to have the whole wiring harness out of the car and then wire up just the things that I need. That way there isn't a bunch of wires in my way. It's kind of a little bit more work, but at the same time, it makes it easier to fix things later. 
because I'll know where everything is without a diagram just off the top of my head. There's only gonna be like a few wires. All right, so it's been a couple hours. I thought I'd just run you through all of what I did and my thought process behind everything. We got those wires coming up through here. And I got this nice, neat, well, not neat, but this is bundled up. So in this string of wires, we got both blinkers, high beams and low beams. And then this right here, which I haven't soldered yet, is just gonna be a ground for both the headlights. Now I'm not hooking up these guys. Uh, these headlights came with some blue LEDs inside them. Maybe you can see it. You can see the reflection of them. I might hook those up later, but right now it's not a top priority. I just want to get this thing on the road. I also threw together this little panel. It's got six accessory switches on it and a fuse box that holds six fuses. Didn't paint it or anything, just, just whipped it up. I got these switches bulk on eBay. It was like a couple dollars for a bag of 10. Uh, they all say hot system though. It'll focus, <laughs> which I thought was funny. I was hoping they'd be labeled different things, but they weren't, but they were cheap. And I know I just said I was running relays, but I thought I'd bring it up. I don't trust any of these switches to hold any amount of power because they were so cheap. So I'm gonna put everything on relays and uh, I have a bunch left over from this car. This is, this is a basic four pin relay and it came out of this car when I gutted it. I'm also gonna be using this very simple two pin flasher. This is for uh, a General Motors car, I believe. But it was here and it'll work. So that's what's gonna run my blinkers. And I'll go into more detail on that stuff as I get it set up. But right now, as you can see, I'm still just kind of planning things out. I got a bunch of stuff laid on the table. I'm just trying to get all the wires probably inside the car. And then I can sit in there and put the dashboard in and wire everything up from the inside. Speaking of wires, I don't think I showed this on camera, but these are the wires coming from the taillights. Uh, this is actually the stock harness. I just put wire loom on it to protect it a little more. And I've got all these nicely labeled simple that actually reaches up to the dashboard too which is cool because that's just stock wires didn't have to extend them didn't have to do anything crazy and this is the switch I've been using to drive it around uh, obviously it's not gonna stay there I'm gonna use one of those switches on that switch panel or I might hook it up to the ignition I'm pretty sure I have the pigtails for the ignition switch so that the car will actually be turned on by key uh, either way, the ignition still locks the steering wheel, so if someone found that switch and tried to do something, they probably wouldn't get very far. So we pretty much have everything we need. There is a switch on the brake pedal to do the tail lights still. One kind of crappy thing is I don't think I'm going to be driving the car today. This is all just taking a little bit longer than I thought it would uh, with the wiring and everything. And uh, I totally forgot that I had to do relays on everything and figure out a place to put a battery and all that. I was getting a little ahead of myself. But for this video to be complete, I do want to make sure that I don't end the video until this stuff actually works. Okay, this is a mess, but it is all wired up. It just needs to be tucked and cleaned up. This is just my testing run. I got headlights, blinkers, and brake lights wired up. You can see I threw a 12 volt battery behind the seat. And everything is running through this eBay fuse box. And the only thing that's on a relay is the headlights. I just used a starter relay out of a Toyota. And I think I already said this, but that's a two wire flasher out of a General Motors car. Check out my uh, testing purposes only ground. Just jam some wires and some metal. That'll do it. All right, let me give you the demo. You can see I got left, right, the O is undecided and the H is for headlights. So if I flip the H. We got headlights. We got taillights. If we go left and right at the same time, we get hazards. 
so I don't have to put a hazard switch in the car. If any cop asks me to test the hazards because they don't believe my wiring, I'll just flip both switches and I got hazards. And as you can see with the hazards working, obviously they work one side at a time too. I can go ahead and turn off the right. And we get right only, or I mean left only. If I turn off the right, we get left only. Kind of goofed on that one. So yeah, I didn't go over the wiring too much. It's really simple stuff. You just plug everything into the fuse box and then you run the positive to the flasher and then to the switch for whichever blinker you want. And then from the switch, you run it to the side of lights that you want lit up. And with the headlight, uh, it's really just the headlight switch runs to the relay. And when the relay turns on, it connects the headlights. And it's all just ran through a fuse box, so everything is safe and nice. So you might be asking what's left before I can drive this on the street. This dashboard still isn't mounted, it's just laid in there. It's all loose and crappy. So I gotta mount the dashboard. The reason it's not mounted is because it was much easier to do the wiring with it loose because I could just lift it up to plug wires into those switches and get all the wires behind there, super easy. I'm gonna turn this blinker off because it's annoying me. So we gotta mount the dashboard and then there's still the problem of the motor mount. My front motor mount sucks. Uh, you can visually see the motor wobble up and down when I hit the gas. The front motor mount will be in the next video because when I do that, I'm also gonna take the motor out of the car and thread lock all the bolts that hold it to the trans because one of those did come loose on me. And while it's out, I also get to show you guys the little adapter I made because nobody ever got to see that adapter. It was on Instagram for a brief moment, but I didn't really explain how I made it. So the motor mount and stuff is the last step before I get to actually test this thing out on the street, see what the top speed is. And if the top speed is too low, then we get to upgrade the controller and everything. But I'm super happy because it has all the lights it needs right now to be legal, which is amazing. Uh, I thought the brake lights were gonna be much harder. It turns out they were super simple. It's literally just the switch on the pedal and you wire it to power and the brake lights turn on. Technically this video took place over three days of work, but I did the bulk of the wiring today in about four hours. So it just shows you that the stuff isn't that hard. It's just tedious. You're gonna get really bored while you're doing it. So I suggest not trying to film a lot of it and just getting it done. So next time you see this, all those wires should be zip tied, loomed and out of the way and it'll all be nice and clean looking. Battery will probably actually be mounted. My ground will actually be bolted to something. And uh, then we'll be able to work on the motor stuff and drive it and take it on the street. It's got lights, it's registered, it's ready to go. I can't wait. <laughs>